step 17 is all about solving and graphing radical functions. So let's start by thinking back to when we learned how to solve just equations. When it's said to solve an equation, maybe something as simple as um, 3x plus 5 equals 12. Solve the equation simply means to isolate the variable to get x by itself. That's how we solve an equation. Today we're going to talk about solving a radical equation. The big difference is we have to do a few things before we can solve for x. So when we solve an equation, we isolate the variable. When we solve a radical equation, we want to first isolate the radical. We then need to eliminate the radical. And then finally, we will be able to isolate the variable. That's our end goal. Our goal, whenever you see the word solve, is always to get the variable by itself. Now, as you do this with a radical equation, sometimes you're going to pick up these strange solutions that don't work when you plug them back into the original equation. That's why it's so critical to always, always, always be checking your answers. You might say, oh, I, I, I know, I'm, I'm supposed to check my answers all the time, just like when I saw the simple linear equation. But it, it usually works, so there's not much point in checking. But with radical equations, it's very essential. You really need to check because you will frequently solve it correctly and still pick up these extraneous solutions, which are these answers that don't actually work. So let's start, because just looking at these three steps don't mean very much until we actually apply them. Okay, so we're trying to solve. We're trying to get this x by itself, but there's a radical. So before we can do that, we need to isolate this entire radical. In other words, if we pretend we have two sides of the equation here, draw the red line down, this blue box is not by itself over here because of the plus 4. We need to eliminate that plus 4 first by subtracting 4 from both sides. Now I have the square root of x plus 2 equals 3. Now, the only thing on the left side of the equation is the radical. So step 1 is finished. Isolate the radical. Now, we want to eliminate the radical. So think about before, when we eliminated this plus 4, we, we subtracted it, because addition and subtraction are inverses. So we're trying to think, well, what will cancel out a square root? What's the inverse of a square root? And the answer is squaring. We want to square this entire side because if I square a square root, they cancel out. But remember, if I do that on the left, I do that on the right. So we're eliminating the radical now. On the left, I'm left with x plus 2, and on the right, I'm left with 9. Step 3, now we want to isolate x. the variable, which in this case is x. How do I do that? Well, so here's our x. It's almost by itself except for this pesky plus 2. So if we subtract 2 from both sides, x equals 7. Now again, it's super critical to take this answer, put it back in our original equation, 7 plus 2 plus 4 does that equal 7? 
Well, 7 plus 2 makes radical 9. Radical 9 is just 3. 3 plus 4 is 7. So I know this is my final answer. Let's try this next one following those same steps. I'm going to mark my variable. That's my end goal. But I have to isolate the radical. But wait a minute. In this problem, there's two radicals. Hmm. Well, technically the one on the left side of the equation is isolated. So let's see what happens if we proceed to eliminate this radical. Let's see what's going to happen if we square to eliminate. Remember, you have to square both sides, not just what's convenient. Everybody will want to just square this radical and ignore this too. We can't do that. It's not allowed. You have to do the same thing to both sides of your equation. So on the left, we end up with x minus 12. And on the right, what does this mean? We have a binomial. What that really means is 2 minus radical x times 2 minus radical x. If you need, you can box it off to the side or do FOIL. Regardless, you end up with 4, take away 2 radical x, take away 2 radical x, which is all together take away 4, and finally, plus radical x times radical x. A radical times a radical cancels out. All right, we have some cleaning up to do. Fortunately, we're down to just one small radical here, which we still need to eliminate. So we can't proceed to go to step three yet, which is to isolate the variable. We still have a radical, so we have to go all the way back to step one. Isolate the radical. To do that, I'm going to subtract four from both sides. x take away 16 is negative 4 radical x plus x. Then I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So I have negative 16 is negative 4 radical x. We're almost there. Keep in mind, it's okay to keep highlighting if that'll help you. We want to get this radical isolated. We have to get rid of times negative 4 through division of negative 4 on both sides. On the left, we end up with a positive 4, and on the right, we have radical x. Now we're ready to square both sides to eliminate that other radical. On the left, I have 16. On the right, I have just x. So let's go back and see if this is going to work. The square root of 16 minus 12, does this equal 2 minus the square root of 16? Well, the square root of 16 minus 12 is the square root of 4. Is that equal to 2 take away 4? Because radical 16 is just 4. Radical 4 is just 2. Does 2 equal negative 2? No. So our answer is no solution. Let's take a look at these next couple of problems. Since they're very similar, what I'd like you to do is pause the video and try them yourself. When you resume the video, you'll see all my detailed work and see if you get the same answer that I get. If you don't, make sure you check with your teacher to make sure you can get this solution correct. You'll notice on the first example that you should get 38 for x, and when you check it, it works. On the second example, however, we don't even need to check this answer because we, we stopped right here. Right here in the solving process, we were down to one radical, but 
what I have here is the radical equals a negative number. That's not possible. That's not possible because if I square it, it would be positive. The square root of a number must be positive. And here we're saying it's negative. That's not possible, so right away I can just go directly to no real solution. So far we've only handled problems that have square roots. When we have a square root, we square the expression to eliminate that radical. To undo a cube root, we're just going to raise it to the third power. And something else I want to remind you of is the notation. When you see a rational exponent like this, it's a fraction less than 1, the number on the top is the power, and the number on the bottom, the denominator, is the root or the index of the root. So I could rewrite this problem just like this. I'll put a 3 in there so that it's a cube root. Everything in the parentheses goes under the radical. And now it's of the same form that the other problems were. For instance, radical x is the same thing as x to the 1 half power. They mean the same thing. And remember, when it's a square root, you can put a 2 there, but you don't need to. Because when there's no number, we understand it to be a 2. So let's start off just like we were before. We're going to isolate the radical. Even though it's not a square root, it's a cube root. It's still a radical. To do that, we're going to add 4 to both sides. Then we're going to divide by 2. So we're left with the cube root of 6x minus 3 equals 2. How do we undo a cube root? We raise it to the third power, both sides. Here, the cube and the cube root cancel out. We're left with 6x minus 3 equals 8, 2 to the third power. And now we just have a linear equation that we need to isolate x. We need to add 3 to both sides. Divide by 6 on both sides. x equals 11 over 6. And of course we need to check this solution with our original problem. So we're going to start off with either, either format, 2 cube root 6 times 11 over 6, take away 3, take away 4, does that give me 0? Well, let's do these parentheses first, 6 times 11 over 6. gives me 11, take away 3, take away 4. Well, 11 take away 3 is just 8, so now I have 8 under the cube root. It's okay if you want to be checking this with your calculator, I'm just showing you how to do it step by step. The cube root of 8 is 2, so I have 2 times 2 take away 4. Is that 0? Well, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 take away 4 is 0. It works. So that is our solution. Again, pause the video. You may rewrite these in using a radical if it helps. I will do one that way and I'll leave one with rational exponents just to show you the difference. Stop back with this video after you've tried it yourself and see if you get the same answer. Okay, for the first practice problem, hopefully you got the answer n equals negative 1. And for our second answer, hopefully you got the answer y equals 7 27 And again, when you plug it back in and check it, it works. Notice on the left, I kept the rational exponent and just cubed it. And on the right example, I changed it into radical form. 
you may do whatever makes you most comfortable. So we've seen square root, cube root, but really any index of a root will work. For instance, if it's fourth root, we're going to raise it to the fourth power. If it's the fifth root, we're going to raise it to the fifth power in order to eliminate that radical. So here's an example where we have an index of four. So in order to eliminate the radical, we're going to raise it to the fourth power. And this is what it will look like. We will add six first because remember step one, we're trying to isolate the radical first. So we have three times the fourth root of 2n plus 6 equals 6. Notice I eliminated the 6's. Now I'm going to divide by 3 so that I can eliminate my coefficient of 3. That leaves me with the fourth power of 2n plus 6 equals 2. So I raise it to the fourth power in order to eliminate the fourth root. It leaves me with 2n plus 6 equal to 16. Subtracting 6 from both sides, I have 10. And finally, dividing by 2, I have 5. We must check it though. 3 times the fourth root of 2 times 5 plus 6 take away 6. Does this equal 0? But uh, let's see, 2 times 5 is where I'll start. 10 plus 6 makes 16. Take away 6, does that equal 0? 4th root of 16 is 2. Three times two makes six, take away six equals zero. So we know we're right. I've already worked out the next example. You can see here that I isolated the radical, or I should say I isolated the quantity to the rational power, since it's not actually the, the radical written right here in the problem. I got x equals 25 for an answer, and when I checked it, it worked. 